All right, so we got the uh, the chain tensioner finally installed in here. It's a little hard to get the camera in here to like show it, but because it's super cramped in here, and can't, camera can't really see it that well, but uh, it is in there, and it is finally working. So hopefully it'll get rid of that horrible noise that was in the last video of this project. Now, next thing I want to work on is is let's see if we can fix the Hillard clutch in the front left hub. to do a quick summary of like the last three days trying to get this thing to work. I did put the new Hillard clutch in, but surprise, surprise, it didn't fix it. Still didn't engage. I played around with it a bunch to see if it was just finicky, nothing. I even measured the voltage going to the coil. It is 12 volts, so it's not that. I, I even you know, switched the polarity to see if that was the issue. I filled the thing with oil to see if that was the issue. It just nothing worked. And then I was like, okay, after like two and a half days of playing around with this, nothing worked. I'm like, I just need a new a new coil for this thing. I looked on eBay. It's 80 bucks. I would have also had to replace the uh, the stainless uh, sleeve that kind of goes around it. That was 30 bucks. And I'm like, eh, let me just let me look at new uh, used spindles. Spindles for this was like 100 bucks, pretty much the same price. So I bought that. It was used, but it was in a lot better condition. And this thing is, and it shipping was going to take about seven to ten days to get here. So, which means that I would have had to put this thing to the side and work on something else in the meantime. And then the next day, after buying the new spindle for this, Paul called me, the guy that gave us most of the parts to build this thing, and he told me you have to tune these things to get them to work. And sure enough, there's that little stainless ring that goes around it that I had to just take a mallet to and kind of push it in. And now it works. It finally works. So right now it's off, and if I spin the back tires, nothing happens. But when I turn both tires on, now they finally engage. Check it out. It's a little violent when they, uh, when they engage. So yeah, the four-wheel drive on this thing is now finally working. All right, now let's finally put the air shocks back on this vehicle and get the suspension working again. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna take some of the oil out of these things because the dampening on these is meant for like a bigger vehicle and this it's just too intense for this thing. So I'm hoping I can lessen that by draining some of the oil out of this thing. So I'm not gonna do much. I just want to do a little bit. I have honestly have no idea how much to do because I don't know how much is in here. So I'm just gonna... Uh... Let's try that and see what that does. Try to save that. So, you can't get the bolt from this direction because that's in the way, and to be able to get it in from this direction, you have to take the axle off. Hmm, I wonder who designed this. I wonder what idiot designed it like this. Really?
So the dampening is a little bit better. It's better in the front, at least, because there's way more weight in the front. I could probably add just a little bit more air to these. They are bottoming out. But yeah, at least it's a lot better. It's at least, you know, when you push it down, it's going back to its original ride height. Before, you just, you know, push the thing down, and it would just stay there. And then you have to pull a, pull the frame up to, you know, back up to its original ride height. Chain's a bit noisy, but it works. Okay, I think it's time to do some driving tests. I want to make sure that all the driving components that I use for this project are strong enough. The transfer cage, the differentials. I just want to make sure that these will hold up to, uh, to what I want to do with this vehicle. So we're going to do this in my backyard. Uh, we're not going to be taking this thing off-roading just yet because I'd rather have this thing break down in my backyard than like three or four miles in the woods at like Brown Mountain or somewhere. That was just in two wheel drive, by the way. That was just two wheel drive. Yeah. All right, that was a moderately successful first test. Nothing blew up, nothing broke. Obviously, we have a lot more stuff we gotta play around with. The belt on this thing, yes, you guys are correct, is super loose. That's making it to where it has to engage at a higher RPM. The chain 
<laughs> super noisy. So I want to figure out a way to quiet that thing down. I, I'm hoping it's just the, t the chain tensioner is super loud. Yeah, let's uh, let's tighten that. That is way too loose. So I'm going to adjust this. Uh, I'm going to move these further in and that will hopefully adjust our belt tension issues and get it a little bit tighter. Alright, so I removed one of the washers I put in there and then the, one of the other washers that was already in there. So now the belt rides higher on this thing and that should make it to where the belt is a lot tighter. Yeah, that definitely seemed to work to, uh, to tighten the belt so hopefully it'll, it'll engage a little bit sooner and a little bit in the lower RPMs. Also, to try and quiet down the chain because that is, it's super loud. I think it's the, uh, the plastic wheel that we machined uh, to, for the chain tensioner. I think it's the plastic on metal which is super loud. So I took it off, I machined it down a lot, and then wrapped it with a lot of duct tape. So therefore it's not plastic on metal. The duct tape makes it, makes it a little bit softer. And uh, you can already hear it's, uh, it's a little bit quieter now. So hopefully, hopefully it's not as loud as it was. All right, let's try this thing now. It's definitely not a fast vehicle, but it uh, it does move. All right, so I want to see how well this thing can pull something. This table is pretty heavy. It does have wheels, but as soon as it goes to the chips, it's almost impossible to move. So, well, first we'll see if it can do it in two-wheel drive. Then we'll switch to four-wheel drive. Didn't want to do it in high range, but as soon as I switched to low range, four wheel drive, it pulled it up no problem. Yeah, there was a reason I wanted to pull this table up here.
tipsy, but uh... Alright, so I made a lot shorter ramp because I want to try to get one of the tires all the way on top of the table and then have the other three tires stay on the ground. Let's hope I don't flip this thing. Get out and see what this thing looks like all the way flexed out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, you gotta admit, that looks pretty cool. That looks awesome. I don't know if this is full flex. It may not be, but yeah. It's not full flex. It can go a little bit more. I'm curious if, if this thing's like ready to tip over. I want to see if I can, like how hard would this be to flip? Ooh. Yeah, I could if I wanted to flip this thing over. I can pack, pick up the back tire, but it's not teetering on the edge of tipping over, which is nice. So to get this to get this thing off the table, I'm not gonna put the ramp back on. I want to see what happens to the suspension when it has like a really sudden hard drop. I'm not gonna sit in it because I, I don't want to, but I'm gonna back this thing up slowly and let it fall off the table. And I just I want to see what the suspension does. Does it land really hard? Does it like try to flip over or something? I don't know. I, I want to see what it does. That wasn't bad. That wasn't bad at all. Wow. Yeah, I don't know what I was worried about. That wasn't, that was like nothing. It landed like it was nothing. Okay, I want to do one more test on this thing before we end this video. This is going to be a test on whether or not all the drive components that I use for this thing are going to be strong enough or not for this vehicle. I have a strap strapped to the back of this thing and then the other the other side is strapped to a tree over there i'm gonna put this thing in four wheel drive i'm gonna first do high range but we may have some belt slipping issues because because we did when uh, trying to pull the table and so if it, it won't do it in high range i'll switch to low range and i just i want to see all four tires just digging into the dirt as hard as they can yeah i really want to do this test in my backyard versus you know taking this thing out on the trails because i'd rather have this thing break right now in my backyard than like three or four miles out in the woods That was a bit anticlimactic. Nothing happened. What the heck? So I think I broke it. I think I the the primary won't it won't budge. It's not the gearbox. The gearbox is fine. It's the primary 
just wasn't engage. It wasn't engaging. It wasn't biting onto the belt, so it's just spinning on there. Let me fire it up, and I'm, I'll leave it neutral, and I'll see if it engages when I rev the engine. I think I broke the primary. Yeah. I don't know if you guys could see that, but yeah, it wasn't engaging. It didn't work. Okay, so I freed it up. It now works. That was, that got stuck. I don't know what happened. But yeah, there was something stuck on there. I sprayed a bunch of this, uh, Silicone quick drying just to kind of help free it up. I'm hoping it doesn't affect the belt, but it's probably going to let's be honest so Yeah, cuz that test was a little anticlimactic. I think we can do a lot better than that I may just go directly into low range cuz I don't think it'll do it in high range. I May just let's just see if it'll do it in low range. So the next test is whether or not it can get itself out of the ruts that it just uh, put itself in. I'm not sure if it's gonna do it, but we'll find out. Yeah, I'm really hoping this works because if it doesn't, I don't really have a plan on how to get this thing out. Uh, 